When you say shad, a lot of anglers in South Africa listen. It's that time of the year. And where I'm living now, shad season starts much earlier. There's been some shad around on the Eastern Cape for some time now, with occasional very good catches, if you put in the time. So we did a quick session one afternoon just looking for some. Join us on this quick session to see what's around. One of the nicest places on the Eastern Cape in Jeffreys Bay is of course Paradise Beach. And uh, we've had some lovely rain now for three, four days. We fished Saturday morning. There are only a few shad, some small, a few herbs and then we've got small uh, quincies here. That's uh, Barracuda Reef and then Stormcut on the left, Raggy Hall, and then the reef we fished and there were only some shad stuff I don't know what happened after I left it but we just are here to have a late Monday afternoon throw the sea still looks nice a bit <laughs> it's a bit late because one o'clock was high you know I think in five or six days of spring so it doesn't matter such a lovely day calm uh, nice one of the warmer days we've had over the last week so we're on the beach Mila's here Caroline's here my Beautiful wash fishing with us nice. today. <laughs> Uh, this time of the year there's a lot of shad around in the eastern cape one of the main target species and a lot of the anglers late late afternoon early morning so they are present and they can obviously bite you all they can sometimes be quite a few there's some nice size ones as well but uh, so you put a little bit of a 60 pound bite trace which is a fiber ring soy a little bit of 60 pound american fishing wire fishing a bit of a green float today and that's on 0.7 for a carbon and then for my single line I use a 0.55 maximum ultra green always have always well so that does the trace and then I've got a 0.80 for a carbon water is slightly discolored it's actually starting to look better when I arrived it looked very clean and then what I'm going to do, I'm just going to put a, I didn't bring chocka, but um, I'm going to put some octopus leg and a bit of a sardine or a, a bit of a shad fillet next to it, put it out, see if we can go tight, that's the whole idea, any size matter, okay, that's the only thing, if you want to run a, slide, uh, a slogan, any size matters, okay, so when you're fishing, you're out, you're having a good time, catching a fish is the privileged part, that's the extra, but being out here is really awesome. All right, I don't need the, the long wraps, I need a little bit. So I cut them a little bit shorter and out of habit. I don't like them sharp. So I just trim that little sharp point. So it gives you a bit more movement the shorter they are. You see it's not rough. And distance in casting with those long, long legs. Got a uh, east wind it's coming from that direction. It blocks your cast a bit. There we go. Now cob won't leave it alone either. I've got a bit of foam around that steel, but the American fishing wire, that coating it's got is actually it's actually quite nice that uh, a lot of times you get the edibles in a problem. Yeah, especially in the Eastern Cape, I've been fishing some leagues here, yeah. fishing's been tough altogether, but uh, we haven't been filming, sorry guys, we haven't been filming, we'll start filming again as soon as I can start catching fish again, I'm just pulling around, but we, we started filming again now, way late, it took us some time to find our feet, and uh, really enjoyed fishing in the club and stuff, but uh, a lot of the guys I see love the red, red cable. The American fishing wire, quite popular, yeah, and it's always been popular as we know. 
with Chad around, you can use the ghost cotton. Now, oh, you know, it's like having a bit of pickers with teeth. As soon as you move here to the Southern Cape and Eastern Cape areas, there's some toothy critters that can uh, mess your bait up quite quickly. So you learn to start using ghost cotton again. We all love the latex uh, for how you can shape baits. But uh, as soon as something with teeth like shad hits the, the latex, it, because of the, the, the elastics, the elasticity of it, it just jumps off and your bait comes off quicker. So by, by using a bit of ghost cotton on the foam, the body of my bait, and then if I have chocker or even the octi, I'll use a bit of this. And then when I put a bit of a fleshy, meaty, either sardine pilly or a shad fillet or whatever I put on the outer, up, on the external side of my bait, that I'll use the, the latex cotton. Sure. See, it's a male thing. We can't do two things at once. So the latex looks very nice for shaping. So I use it on the outside of my bait. On the inside, I'm, I secure my bait, especially for those critters with ghost cotton. So I don't get it off as easy. That's where they get the ideas for alien movies from. It's octopus and squid. Struggling to thaw, so I'm gonna start cutting the leg out so long and get that defrosted quickly. That will clean up a bit. Now, what's lovely about this coastline or piece of coastline as well, we're going into the winter, or we're pretty much in the winter. A lot more edible species, stiembras and spots here are paralyzed by these reefs and stuff. <laughs> it's white muscle cracker, black muscle cracker, uh, spotties, uh, gullies, cow shark, stiembras, cob, uh, chalion, well the odd chalion, there's not a lot here, hottentot or the bronze bream really. Um, what else? Villapad, Jan Brain. There's just a variety of species you can get stuck in. So, bronze bream being one of the species you, if you want to target them, you'll have to scale down on the hooks. The rest you can, you can fish a, a general hook size of a 2-3-0, uh, ring soy a 5-0, because it's a, it's a small make hook. That's equivalent to a 2 3 of other hooks I've got, 3 -o. So, I can get most species on that. And on a 3 -o or 2 -o ring sway, in the past I, I landed an 80, what was an 80 kilo eagle right, and it held. So I've got a lot of confidence in that. And then, on my rod, I'm using the iron feather, but I replaced the guys to pop out this unfortunate part. They've got lovely blends. But the components on their rods, I don't know, I think, I don't know if there's other people, my opinion, they can really relook their components on the rods. So I've replaced the middle piece eyes, I'm going to still take the, the tip and replace all those guides, the proper ones, and as soon as I can, I'll, the, the grip will probably, or the real seat will, will last, but as soon as I can, I'll put a proper fruity in there. Other than that, lovely blank to fish with. Now, I don't want to smack this too much, I want, want it to stay, but in a tough day, Relatively tough for the pickers. Stick it in there, and then that toothpick piece I left there, you can work it through. Even use your knife, this toothpick for it. That we tie on. I'm going to use a bit of ghost cotton here so that my bait doesn't just jump off with the first shell. Have a first shade bite. And obviously a favorite of the punsies here, the black muscle crackers. Got a lot of those small ones the other day on the boat. Got a nice one almost 50 centimeters and we got quite a few of the smaller ones and it's so nice to see it's almost a nursery for the muscle cracker here. The 
Black Princess. Now that's going to have a bit of a flash. While the sun is still there, No self-respecting cop or punsi should swim past this. Shape it a bit now. Okay, let's go put this on the water and see what it does. Biting earlier already, pretty close to 40 centimeters, but immediately it went on. I didn't, as I clipped over here, I just felt it, and uh, I didn't clip over properly, so I struck nothing, then clipped over, tightened up, and there you have it. Good size shed. It's going to be a lovely dinner tonight. Let's kind of see the hook. Oh, that's my octopus. That was my tentacle. Job team. Guys, now, I'm sure everyone, if you're new and you haven't caught shad before, these are razor sharp teeth. And they'll chop off the tip of your finger. But apart from that, they've got a, an enzyme on their teeth that prevents the blood from stalling. So you just keep on bleeding, bleeding, bleeding. So your other, other what we keep in South Africa is called stall dipples in your bag, which stops bleeding. Or you just have to wait and let it beat up. Hello, this is Blue Bottle. You know, they have blue chairs. And, and they, they can spike you and they can go too much. Bye. That's our little production assistant there. She's actually such a good girl on the beach playing while we're filming and Andres fishing. It's such a blessing. And we're so blessed to actually be able to do this as a family. I don't know if that was a fluke shad that just was there when I cast it and if there's a few so I'm still gonna put the time into my bait in case there's a there's not a lot of shad and hoping for that little cobby or something but uh, already when you're fishing mackerel and even shad fillet shad fillet will still get small shad but as soon as I put mackerel on I find I get bigger shad Especially in this, well, not just in this area. Uh, I've seen it so many times, you put a mackerel out and catch one of those big five kilo shads. So, in my opinion, it's a, it's a good option when you know there's been some bigger shad around. And you don't want to get, because there's been very small ones as well. want those small ones as fast on your bait a bit of mackerel helps with that it's one of my little things I believe in don't realize is they can't hear it and they don't understand. That was a good buy, but it dropped it. Came in a bit and then went away and then dropped it. Baiting, Mila is busy preparing a fireplace for us. She's been 
collecting some stones and wood. No, I know to get a bike you need to put some fresh in. Okay, as I wanted to give up, <laughs> as it's quite cold here, yeah? had a very nice pull on the Octi Lake. Not like a good fish. Can't tell you what it is yet. It can be a small spotty or something. It took me nice. Baby shark at that made her day. Eh? Baby shark! <laughs> your mind is set on edibles, fishing edibles, and you hook a shark, it's unexpected, but that take then makes you think it's a proper, a decent, decent edible, because it just comes in and then flatten like a punchy wood or a nice cob wood, but still, nice fight, nice to see them here, and uh, yeah, I don't know if there's going to be more, and I don't know if I'm going to have another throw, we'll make that decision just now. So we packed up a bit early. But still such a nice afternoon on the beach. It's getting chilly now. Your toes and everything can feel it. So it's time to pull out all the winter wear. And uh, <laughs> when I got that shad on the first cast, I thought that was it. It's probably going to be a lot of shad here. But that was literally in front of his nose that bait landed. Because after that, just very small. On Saturday morning when I was here, small shad this size were on your bait. So it just it destroys the bait so quickly. You don't get a bigger bite. Then I just went a bit left and threw in a different spot uh, with only octopus and yes, finally got that little bronzy that came through. Good fun. But such a nice area. If you look at this, few places in South Africa compare to this, uh, where this time of the day you feel safe and absolutely surrounded by this beauty and still a bit of wildness about it now yes you've got Cape St. Francis or St. Francis right here Cape St. Francis that side and Jeffreys Bay that side but this whole stretch of Paradise Beach is close to paradise if you can call it that but uh, yeah great afternoon nevertheless mm -hmm. 